Good morning. Is everyone awake? <laughs> a little bit of an early start. I um, hope you're ready for some math. The previous talk involved uh, fun things like mechanical connectors, very intuitive things, and this is more a theoretical presentation. So I hope you're up for it. And actually, as was mentioned, uh, this is sort of a two-part presentation. This first talk is an introduction to the concept of the unsented transform. And then in the later talk, in the same session, we'll talk about applying that sort of algorithm to the problem of VNA verification. Uh, okay, so first of all, as was mentioned, uh, there are two of us authors here today. I am up there as an author, but it's really more of a technicality. I was involved mainly in the logistics of translating and submitting the paper. Um, in this past week, we were joined by my colleague, the primary author, Vladimir Guba from Tomsk, <laughs> uh, who actually fully understands all of these things in great detail. So what I'm trying to uh, request of you is that for your detailed questions, we may need to defer to Mr. Guba. I will take a chance on any soft, uh, slow pitches you have, but uh, for the tough ones, save them for my colleague, please. Okay, and uh, so with that, I'd like to get started. And I'll also apologize for uh, more or less reading my speaker notes. Again, I'm not the primary author of the paper, so I've been trying to get up to speed on the subject matter. Um, so the paper and presentation here are related to analysis of error based on covariance, uh, the covariance matrix, and using the unscented transform, the UT conversion, and specifically, we're proposing to use the unsented transform as applied to measurements in microwave frequencies. And so as a way of introduction to the unsented transform, it's good to consider its application to some common uh, uh, problems in the literature. And the same approach, as I mentioned, will be explained later as applied to a specific verification problem in uh, vector network analysis. So we'll start with the description of the general challenge, which is how to estimate the statistical characteristics, the mean, uh, the mean and the covariance matrix of a random output variable y from a function where the random input variable x has known statistics. Uh, in general, the dimension of the space Y can differ from the dimension of the space X. So, for example, conversion uh, from a two-dimensional parameter may be to a one-dimensional parameter. And that particular case will be included later in this presentation. So let's consider the nonlinear model. There are several methods of calculating the statistical characteristics of the nonlinear transformation. The first approach listed on this slide here, linearization, is a well-known well and well-understood method. It involves calculation of the mean of the output at one point, the midpoint of the input typically, and the covariance matrices at that point uh, from the Jacobian. The last approach shown, the Monte Carlo approach, uh, involves calculation of the statistics with the help of a very large number of trials. Um, and it can be considered to be the most accurate method uh, if the number of trials is very, very large. Um, and the other two methods, the unsented transform and higher order unsented transform are the topic, uh, are the subject of this talk. So these equations, and I told you to get ready for math, right? These equations describe the unsented transform conversion uh, in n-dimensional space, starting with a selection of a set of sigma points. And this framework is described in more detail in the paper referenced in our uh, presentation and also in our paper by Julier. Uh, and in fact, I will quote the Julier paper here briefly uh, as an introduction. The probability density function of an n-dimensional variable x is approximated by two n plus one sigma points. And those are denoted as x sub i, uh, from i being from zero to two n. The statistics of the sigma point set and their weights are selected to match the statistics of the input x, where lambda is a scaling parameter. 
see lambda there. Expressions require the square root of the matrix V sub X. That's the covariance matrix, and the root can be obtained with Cholsky factorization. Uh, so basically, we're going to choose some uh, so-called sigma points around which to base our analysis. And the first point selected is the mean of the input variable X, and the rest are obtained based on analysis of the covariance of the matrix, uh, the covariance matrix of X and the scaling parameter gamma. And then we map those uh, sigma points into the Y domain, and we perform some weighting maths on the covariance matrix and the mean uh, to come up with estimates of the mean and the covariance of Y. And again, we refer you to the Julier paper for a detailed explanation. If you're interested, I'm, I'm sure you're all fascinated by the concept. Uh, this slide shows the same algorithms in a block diagram format. Uh, so just to walk through here if I can find my mouse. So the order of the processing roughly corresponds with the order of the formulas on the previous page. Sorry about that. Uh, first, we take the mean of x, the input variable, and its statistics are assumed known, and add that to the square root of the covariance matrix multiplied by uh, a uh, scalar uh, multiplier, either positive or negative here, to compute the uh, sigma points in the, in the uh, uh, to compute the sigma points. And then basically the function f here in general can be a nonlinear function. It maps the sigma points to the y domain where we use a set of weights and the equations for defining the weights are on the previous slide, but basically we use the set of weights to compute the mean of y or estimate the mean of y and to estimate the covariance matrix of y. So that's the unsented transform in uh, five minutes. Now let's apply that to uh, an a application. So one particular uh, nonlinear transformation which is of interest is uh, from Cartesian po coordinates to polar. And this was not an arbitrarily chosen example. This is sort of a standard example that's uh, often found in the literature when considering propagation of uncertainties. Uh, the, the transformation in this case is from a two-dimensional space, Cartesian X and Y, to a two-dimensional space, uh, magnitude and phase. So from two dimensions into two dimensions. So uh, essentially what we do is calculate the statistics of the column vector Y, including its magnitude and phase, uh, taking as known the column vector X, which contains the real and imaginary parts of a known complex number, and given the covariance of x. And we use that, uh, those inputs to estimate the mean and the covariance of y. So on the right side here, in the plots, you can see a comparison of the estimates uh, obtained by the Monte Carlo method. And these, all these red points are outputs of the Monte Carlo uh, algorithm, um, as well as the contour at uh, three sigma. That's this circle. And this top plot is for the uh, mean. This is the mean as estimated by the Monte Carlo approach. And on the bottom, we see uh, the covariant, or I'm, I'm sorry. This is, I need to uh, consult my notes here. Yes, so on the bottom, you can see a significant difference between the Monte Carlo mean here and the mean as obtained by the linearization approach. Uh, and there's a significant discrepancy here, um, as well as a difference in the uh, three sigma uncertainty ellipse. The solid line here is from the Monte Carlo simulation. The dashed line is an approximation using linearization. Uh, by comparison, these are the estimates obtained by the unscented transform on the left and the high order unscented transform on the right. The difference being simply the number of sigma points that are used. So as you can see on the left, the uh, plus signs uh, represent our, sig our chosen sigma points according to the equations earlier in the presentation. Uh, in the X domain on the top and as transformed into the Y domain on the bottom. And you can see that the three sigma ellipse uh, matches more closely 
to the Monte Carlo uh, simulation. And the mean is also quite comparable. Uh, it's closer than it was for the linear approximation. And in the case of the higher order unscented transform, you can see there are a few more sigma points. That's what makes it higher order. And uh, you can see those are transformed uh, down to the Y domain. And again, the mean and the covariance ellipse uh, match more closely to the Monte Carlo simulation. So things are working. Uh, continuing the example of uh, Cartesian to polar coordinate uh, transformation, here we see a comparison of the mean estimates in the top plot and the standard deviation in the bottom plot uh, at different values of the amplitude signal to noise. So, and just as a note, to achieve a various signal to noise, the magnitude of x was varied and the variance of x was left unchanged. So this is a well-known limitation of the linearization approach. As, uh, as we approach zero, the uncertainty also approaches zero, uh, which is not intuitive at all. Uh, we should never have zero uncertainty about the measurement result. Um, in reality, and the Monte Carlo simulation shows us this, the uncertainty does get smaller, but approaches some uh, non-zero value, some small but non-zero value here. And as you can see, the unscented transform and the higher order unscented transform uh, track the Monte Carlo result more closely than linearization, especially uh, at smaller values of the uh, magnitude. And similarly, on the bottom plot, linearization um, is uh, the worst of the estimates as would be expected. And the unscented transform and higher order unscented transform track the Monte Carlo result more closely. Uh, so now a second example of application of the unscented transform. And perhaps something a bit more interesting, a uh, little less academic, calibration of a power meter with a mismatch at its input. So this is a model of what we'll measure with a uh, power meter uh, when there's a mismatch at its input. And uh, we should note that this is a simplified model from the general model, uh, assuming that the uh, generator output and the standard power meter uh, both have re reflectionless interfaces. Uh, but this, again, is a common example in the literature. Uh, so in this case, uh, the power meters are connected to the signal source, and the power ratio is estimated as the ratio of the measured power to the reference power, uh, which will be 1 minus the absolute value of gamma squared. So if there is an impedance mismatch, the power meter's result will, be, uh, will deviate from the correct result. And this is the framework uh, for the uh, linearization method. This is not new. This is well known. So we applied the unscented transform and the higher order unscented transform to this problem. And you can see the estimates that were obtained. Uh, again, at lower uh, values of, the, of x here, uh, the linearization model uh, tells us the uncertainty will approach zero, which is not an intuitive result. And in fact, is shown by the Monte Carlo simulation not to be correct. Um, but in this case, the unscented transform uh, predicts the uncertainty quite accurately uh, when we use beta equal to 1. So this is a so-called uh, scaled unscented transform, and the parameter beta can be chosen according to the particular problem that you're analyzing. Uh, in this case, beta equals 1 uh, seems to give us the best result. And here we see the relative errors of the standard deviation estimates uh, in the bottom plot. Uh, the scaled unscented transform is the result with beta equal to 1. So, in conclusion, uh, we've, we've shown you one specific application of the unscented transform and higher order unscented transform. Um, it can predict the mean and covariance matrix of, uh, with second or higher order accuracy, but it doesn't, unlike the linearization method, does not require derivation of the Jacobian. Uh, and the unscented transform is better suited, uh, we would argue, for linearization of the VNA uncertainty analysis at low signal levels. Uh, for higher signal levels, or in a situation where there's less noise, uh, the unscented transform tracks the linear model. Uh, so there's really no inaccuracy there. 
um, the results are the same. And so uh, you've seen the performance benefits of the algorithm in a realistic example. Thank you.